What's up guys, Velocity back with another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to enable and use the new Water Advanced plugin in Unreal Engine 5.6 that enables some built-in character physics interactions with the water to get some really nice ripples as you move through it, as well as how to enable the water plugin itself and set up different water bodies on your landscape. For example, an ocean that surrounds your landscape and then having a lake and a river to transition between the two. But just before we get started, if you guys like what we do here and you want to connect with more like-minded people, access to our Discord server, Mizzo's Dizzo, is available for just $1.50 per month via Patreon. The Discord server is becoming a pretty cool place to be, with tons of very cool, very helpful, and very smart people, as well as an integrated AI chatbot to help you with all of your Unreal Engine 5 related questions. Your $1.50 actually goes towards that AI chatbot because it is a paid model and is indeed very clever as well as helping support us in what we do here at Pitchfork Academy. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. All right, the first step is to make sure that you have Unreal Engine 5.6 installed. If you don't, just make sure you click this little plus here on the engine versions, and it will pop up a new box, and you can select which version of the engine that you want to install. I already have it installed, so I'll just go ahead and launch this. And then once you're here on the project browser, you can go ahead and select games, and then I'll select the third person character template, and my variant, I'll leave on none, but they do have these new variants you can go ahead and play around with and then name it whatever you want. I have mine called Water Interact and click Create. All right, the first thing that we need to do is go to our plugins and to get there, we just need to go to Edit at the top and then down to Plugins. And here we can just search for water. And the two plugins that we need to enable are the Water Experimental plugin. Keep in mind that this is experimental. It's gonna give you a warning about that doesn't recommend shipping final games with it, but you can definitely work with this and they're going to probably update it more in the future. I'll go ahead and click yes on that. And then I'll also enable the water advanced plugin. This is where the magic is for the water interaction. I'll click yes on that as well. And then I'll restart now. And then the next step is to go back to our edit tab. And then this time we'll click on project settings. And then inside here, we just wanna search for shallow and we'll find here, use default shallow water subsystem. This is the new system that is included with that water advanced plugin to make the water interaction work. It uses the Niagara 2D grid simulation. If you are curious and wanna look more into that, you can search up about Niagara 2D simulation, uh, but I'll just go ahead and click enable here and then close out. And I'll just restart my project one more time for good measure. All right, now that we've started back up, we can create a new level. I'll go to File, New Level, and click Basic, and then Create. Right away, I want to delete the floor. We're gonna create a landscape. And then before I create a landscape, I do want to save the map since it's currently named nothing and it's just untitled. But before I do that, I'll create a folder for maps. So I'll right click in my content browser, New Folder, and call it Maps. And then inside here is where we'll eventually put the level, but um, we need to save. So click file, save all. And then now we should have this maps folder and we can name it whatever we want. I'll just call it water test for my purposes. You might have your own level names, that's fine. Click save and then now we have our level here. I'll just click file, save all once more just to be safe. And then from here we can click selection mode and then landscape. And yours might be on 63 by 63 by default. Um, I like to set mine at 127 by 127, just to make it a little bit more dense and larger, and then I'll click Create. All right, once we have our landscape, we're good to go back from landscape mode to selection mode, and then we just wanna go ahead and grab an ocean. So if you go to the cube with the plus and search for water, you'll see there's a bunch of water body options, ocean, lake, river, island, etc. I'll just click the ocean and then click Complete. This sets it to be in a water layer or edit layer, so that way you can turn all these off and on if you need. And right away, it's going to look really weird. That's because the location of the water body ocean gets set to a weird value. So I just like to zero that out. And right away, we get our island. Now, you'll notice, though, if we go up, there's still this big square um, with a bunch of water around. And if I click on the landscape, our landscape is still this big, but we're only seeing it this big. So if we click on the water body ocean and then click G on our keyboard, this brings up the spline points. And you can just click on any of these and move them around and shape your island or your landscape however you like. I'll just move it down like this. And then at any point along the spline, 
you can right click once you see the four arrows pop up. So you can see if it's just a perfect cross there and now we have the arrows. Once those pop up, you can right click and add spline point here. And then you get another spline point to mess with. And then you can click on the little handles on the edge too and then mess with those separately to really get some nice curves and fade. Click on this one. So that's how you can kind of get a little bit more interesting of a shape than just a simple um, square. And then the other thing you'll notice is that we get this little ridge here, but we'll mess with that in a sec. Let's quickly just see if our ripples are working. So if I go full screen, it might lag just a sec at first, just to kind of get everything working. All right, now we can go over to the water and look at that. We get some really nice water interaction built into the engine with the new water advanced plugin. Really, really cool. It also has this other feature, the water line. If you go up to the edge of the water, you can see as the water passes the camera, you get this really smooth water line effect. And there's also a built-in post-process volume underneath that you can adjust as well in the material. And yeah, it's all built in and interacts everywhere. But you'll notice right now that I've went into the water and triggered the Niagara fluid simulation that it creates this sort of artifacting around the landscape. So there's a couple of things I want to do to clean that up. The first is just simply to set the landscape location to be one centimeter above where it's at. So now it's not zero anymore where the water is. It's one centimeter above that. So now when I go and play and get in the water, we don't get that artifacting anymore. But we still get this ridge. So one way to get rid of that is just to click on your water body ocean, not the landscape and then scroll down until you find the water height map settings. And then under fall off settings, there's fall off mode. I just switch it from angle to width and it seems to get rid of that pretty much right away. Uh, so now we can sculpt and see what happens there. So I'll just go in here and click on the noise brush, make sure it's only on add. And then I crank up the scale just so we can get a little bit bigger hills. So you'll notice we get some nice natural looking hills, but as I go towards the water, it kind of cuts it off. It's not letting me go any further. And that's because of the settings on the water body ocean. So if I click on the water body ocean, scroll down, there's quite a few settings here for this. One is the channel edge offset, so that's negative a thousand. I'll leave that for now and I'll go down to just the edge offset. And if I set this to zero, you can see it pulls the landscape out towards the water. And then if I set it to negative a thousand, it pulls it even further. So now you can see it's much closer, but we still aren't all the way there. So that's where we can go to the channel edge offset, set that to zero. That pulls the water back in. And um, yeah, now we got this really nice lineup with the terrain from the landscape right into the water. So if we wanted to you know, have it be hilly right by the water, we could. And then we could always sculpt back down to be closer to the ground. Create a little beach. And just like that looking great. And then really quickly, I just wanted to show you can also quickly add a water body lake. It'll put it wherever it wants at default. I just reset the location again. And we can just play and see how this works. So we just put that in and right away, it just works. So it's pretty cool. All of these water bodies are interconnected. You can um, add them together and create more of them. I could even add a water body river. Oh, that's the wrong one. Um, water body river. I'll zero out the location. And then I'll just line this up to be coming from the lake. And then I'll click on the final spline point and I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and drag. It'll create another spline point. Oh, didn't mean to raise it. And then I'll do that again. And then once more. So now I've kind of created this little river. Again, with these jagged edges here, you can always click on one of the spline points and then click the handle of that spline point and drag it out and adjust it. And that's where you get the really smooth edges. So now if I go up to my water, click play, we have the lake. 
and it pretty smoothly transitions into the river. And it has velocity, that's me, <laughs> all the way down. You can even change that per spline point. So let's say around this bend, you wanted it to be faster. You just click on it and then velocity, you could do 512. So you can see right around that edge, it's faster. And then it slows back down to the default that you have it. And it should just go right into the ocean. If I click play, you can see pretty seamless transition. It might not be perfect in all cases, but you can always adjust the spline points and your landscape to make it look how you want and a little bit more natural. Maybe at the edge of the river here, it kind of widens out into the ocean, and then maybe it could be thinner along the rest of the spline. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video on the water plugin and enabling physics interactions with the water. If you guys enjoyed, it'd mean a lot to us if you left a like on the video and subscribe to our channel. And definitely go check out our new game, Skyblocker, on Steam. This has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy, and I'll see you in the next one.